This is Tax Pro Nation, the home of independent tax professionals. Find community, maximize your earnings, and live life on your own terms. I'm your host, Jeff Dolan, Vice President of Pronto Tax School. And I'm your co-host, Andy Fry, founder and CEO of Pronto Tax School. My grandfather started Pronto Income Tax in Los Angeles back in 1965. My father and I carried on the family business and became tax business entrepreneurs. I launched Pronto Tax School because I know that given the right training and tools, you too can experience the freedom the tax business can offer. I grew up with a dad who wasn't working all the time, who had time to spend with his five children, who could take us to the beach on a Tuesday if that's what he wanted to do. The tax business can be an ideal business for people who want that kind of freedom, but it's got to be done purposefully in order to work that way. And that's why we're here, to help you navigate your journey as an independent tax professional. Don't do it alone. Join the nation. Let's jump in. Welcome to episode four, where we will be discussing step four of the nine steps of the Pronto Path, which is our map of the journey you will take as an independent tax pro. In this opening series, we are tackling one step per episode. Step four is called elevation. Raising prices on existing clients and be working in at least one highly profitable niche. It's time to elevate. <laughs> Good morning, Andy. <laughs> elevation. I like the sound of that. Elevation. Uh, I like the sound of the last episode, traction. It's kind of like, you know, once you get traction, then you move towards elevation. Man, I, I'm getting excited just hearing about it. I need some elevation this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have your coffee? I got my second cup of coffee, so I should be able to elevate and uh, <laughs> and, and discuss this elevation. And um, it's this is this is a really big step for tax professionals, and so I'm definitely excited to uh, discuss it with you, Jeff. Cool. So last week we talked about getting to to 50 clients, right? And now we're we're building beyond that. We've built our business up. Uh, we have our process, we have our target market, our unique selling proposition. We, we know what we're doing, right? And uh, we're doing very well. And we're kind of hitting a ceiling maybe. We're trying to elevate <laughs> our business, uh, but we're not sure how. And uh, we might not be charging the right prices uh, or too low, or we might not have enough clients or leverage to really grow the way we need to. So I know you mentioned a lot of tax professionals are stuck at this step. So let's talk about that. So first of all, I think it's it's something that's really important, and even our, our business coach Jim, you know, as points out, and you and I are you're pretty competitive, and we want to keep, you know, keep moving forward and try to do do our best and, and all that. And so sometimes with that type of personality, or even some of our listeners, you know, might be that way as well. Is we we need to stop for a second to celebrate what we've already achieved, and so if you if you're at that traction stage and you have 50 clients, or you've helped 50 clients, you've already succeeded to a good degree, and so definitely take a moment or, or a few moments or even a couple of days to to really cel- celebrate that accomplishment. At the same time, if you're interested in elevating your business, so for instance. Uh, maybe you're doing it as a part-time side gig and you feel like you could replace your income and have this be a real business for you. Um, or you've been doing it yourself and you have uh, a friend or a contact that wants to get into the business and join your business, right? So you see like, oh, if they're doing 50 too and I'm doing 50, wow, we can really start to grow this thing. So you start to kind of see that there's something beyond that initial traction step. Um, so many people get stuck on, on this step and uh, it's, it's a really uh, something that is challenging and it has a lot to do with your mindset. So I know that we'll be talking about this uh, in this episode, but also has a lot to do with math. So if you're, if you're <laughs> that doing... That pesky thing called math. Yeah, I never liked it. you know. But when it comes down to, to making some money, we have to understand how the math works. So somebody that's on the traction step and is looking for this elevation... Um, piece of their business. Let's give a couple examples of what that actually looks like in real life that we see all the time. So say you're doing 50 clients at $50 a piece. That's $2,500 in revenue. How do you get to $15,000 in revenue? 
Say you're doing 50 tax returns at $100 a piece. That's 5,000 in revenue. How do you get to 25,000 in revenue? You're doing 50 tax returns at 200 bucks a piece. Nice job. You're making an extra 10,000 a year. How do you get to 50,000? How do you get to 200,000? Right? So that when you start thinking like that, you're you're ready to to go for the elevation uh, step. Right. And so this is this is this sounds kind of scary, right? Raising prices on existing clients and working in at least one highly profitable niche. So hopefully by now you're starting to see the trends, right? You, you've already kind of analyzed your first 50, found what the trends are. You, you're focusing on that area. Maybe you're, you're signing on more clients, but raising prices seems just impossible. Well, especially because you know when it comes down to mindset is that you are so... If you're in the right mindset for the traction phase and for the activation and the initiation, you're really grateful for people that give you a chance to to help them out. You know, so when you look at your first 50 clients, like that's like people you really care about and you really are very grateful to them for helping you to build your business. Right. And so when you come to raise prices or you even think about raising prices, you're like, well, I can't do that to Donna. You know, like she was the third person that helped me out, right? And so it's a whole switch in your mind. Like, you know, you, you had made a quote here when we were preparing the, the show notes, which I definitely found to be true, is what got you here will not get you there. Yeah. Okay? So when you're thinking about Donna and about how you've been giving her this steal of a deal of doing her taxes for 60 bucks, and meanwhile, she's got like two rental properties or whatever, and her previous person, she was paying 550 Right? You have to be able to navigate that to get to elevation because it's math, right? Like Donna is not going to stop having needs as far as taxes. If her desire to get the job done for 60 bucks is more important than your desire to elevate your business while still taking care of her, it's not a mutually exclusive you know, thing, then you're going to be stuck at this point. You, you have to be confident enough to raise your prices, right? And, and stand fully behind what you're offering. And know that that is a good price for what you offer. And in order to do that, I mean, realistically, it all comes... like Before you can raise prices in a way that you have integrity and you have confidence and all the good things that make you, you, know, make you love your business, you have to raise your value. So like during these years, like or, or these seasons, you know, like you just finished up the tax season, you reached that traction stage, uh, you know, 50 clients. What training are you doing? We don't use the word off season, but you know, it, when when it's not tax season, what training are you adding this year? Like, yeah. what are you adding to your repertoire? How are you going to help your clients so much better next time you see them? To where when you say that the price is double, you know, in your mind, they may have a little bit of adjustment in their mind to realize how worth it it is. But you know why it's worth it because you added this because you can help them ex you know this way and you're able to articulate that value. So I, I want to make sure that when we're talking about raising prices, we're talking about raising value uh, for yourself as a professional because those two need to go hand in hand. Right. So so really, what we're saying is you're raising your prices because you're raising your own value of what you're offering. Yeah. So you're growing as a as a business owner as a tax professional. You're, you're expanding your knowledge. You're getting that training you need. Uh, you're becoming more valuable to your existing clients. Absolutely. And you're expressing that to your clients. So when you, you, when you go to say, okay, it was 60 bucks. And, and you know this year, I just want to give you a heads up. It is going to be $140. I raised my prices because of XYZ. We added this. We kind of rounded out our service so that now you get this, this, and that. I feel like this is a great solution for you. I know that we were doing it for this, but this is even a better value because of these things that we've added. Mm -hmm. Most people are pretty rational. And as long as it's a reasonable price, like they have a decision to make at that point, right? Yep. yep. So that's the elevation phase. If you, if you feel like you cannot have that conversation with somebody because it would just be so painful to, to you, then it's probably going to be better if you work at a business where they handle that for you, right? But it, but but trust me, it's really not that hard. Yeah, like you're going to lose a percent, a certain percentage of clients, but like it's 
trust me, once you do it, it's not that bad. And there's <laughs> there's some techniques you can use on this, right? So if you work for a larger company, it's always easier because you can point to the policy change. Well, it's, it's our policy now. It, it changed, you know, our, you know, what can I do? It, it's what our policy is. <laughs> but I think even small entrepreneurs can do this too. You can create your own policy at the beginning of the year of your new rates, what you charge, how you do business, your new process. You know, what are you doing differently this year that is changing your policy? And you can have that conversation where our policy today is that this is our new way of doing business, right? And so you can, you can always make it about something external to you, right? Whether you're working for a bigger company that changed their policy or whether you're making it a policy change in your own business as an entrepreneur, uh, it's always more convincing to say to somebody like, I've already thought very deeply through this and this is the new policy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Trust me, this is in fact the new policy. <laughs> and it's, it's going gonna, gonna to help you because of X, Y, Z. Right. And and if the, and if you've done your job right and you've built trust with that client, th- they're going to want to go on the journey with you. Are you somewhere in your tax career and feeling lost with what to do next? Do you sometimes wish you had a map to show you your next step to reach your full potential as a tax professional? Here at Pronto Tax School, we have developed that guide. We call it the Pronto Path, and we want to share it with you for free. Go to taxpronation.com slash path right now. So over time, as a tax professional, you should be knowing your clients and staying in touch with them enough to where they trust you. And, and you, you most likely won't have all of your clients just leave you unless you made your service completely about price. And that was your unique selling proposition was, I'm the cheapest on the block, period. And that's all I'm, I'm going to be the you know, the cheapest, well, that was your selling point. And now, yes, you're going to have a lot of clients that leave you based on price. But even then, I mean, as you, you touched on in the, in the last uh, you know, episode that we did, is for most people, price is really not the determining factor. Right. So that's why I like that 50 client number for traction, because it's kind of an indication that you have something going on other than just you're super cheap. Yeah, because most people are really not. It's a nice bonus if they if it's affordable. If you have different payment options to make it easier on their wallet or whatever it might be, it is a factor. And it's foolish to say like, okay, price doesn't matter. Of course it matters. But once you're at fifty clients, you know, mostly people have at least another consideration other than purely price. And so, how can you turn that to your advantage? You're if you're raising your game like you should be. You need to get to a point where you can raise those prices uh, to a point where you're going to get the result for your business that you want. You know, just flat out. Like, and I'll give you an example. I remember when when I started um, in our Monrovia office location way back in 2001. Like, we were doing like 90,000 in revenue, and I was like, okay, it's me and Jesse, and then we wanted to have one other person to help us out. I was like, 90,000 in revenue is not going to pay any any of us anything. Right. Like at the end of the day, like I was coming from like a different environment, you know, like where I was like, okay, how am I going to make some real money here? But you, you, so many of the clients were used to paying like just totally dirt cheap prices. And I remember that process. It was a couple year process of where I was like doubling and tripling fees and just looking directly at the person's face and just being like, I totally understand. It's more than last year. I totally understand. Like I'm here to take care of you. And as you can see, like, uh, I'm I'm doing the absolute best I can. We're getting better every year, and so I understand if this is you can't afford this. At the same time, I feel it's a great value, and also just understanding like what are your other options? Or like it's kind of like a game of poker. Like it's like this is what I need to do to do this, and I love taking care of you. At the end of the day, like I got to eat, I got to be able to advance my career, and so this is what's happening. This is happening right now. So that seems kind of scary, right? You had that conversation. What was the outcome? What was your client loss rate? Very little. I mean, very little. And I've done that even you know since then, set like several times. Yeah. You know, so it has to be backed up by value and you understanding the value. But but the value is there. Like if you are taking care of people and you care about them, and if they ever have a problem, like that's something that I always took pride on, and, and you know, and that I saw my dad doing is that like if anybody ever had a problem for anything that we did, you know, 
you know, God forbid, we're not perfect. Like if you do thousands of tax returns, like you're not going to do everything perfectly. It's not going to happen. But do you stand behind your work? Like we always said, you know, there's never going to be a situation where somebody's going to have a problem. We're not going to do everything we can to help them out. Yeah. Period. Yeah. So like if, if that's, that is value, like mm-hmm. to me. And so, you know, my, my dad actually is more on the line of like, he likes to charge really low prices. I'm not really like that. You know, because I had different needs that I was growing up and I was like, okay, I want to be able to like buy a house, you know, like I want to do, you know, you know, I want to be able to do these things or to make this career work for me. Yeah. And you, Cause you have to, as an entrepreneur, you have to have stability in your business, right? I mean, you have to be able to get where you need to go as an entrepreneur and, and take your business to a level that you want to be at. I mean, it's no, it's no fun if, you sign 500 clients and you got to go out of business, right? Because you didn't have, you didn't make enough money, but you had plenty of clients. <laughs> and it happens all the time. I mean, you'd be surprised. There's so many tax professionals that are really good. I mean, really good tax professionals and are, you know, at the end of the year or come September or October are like barely scraping by. And it's like, you know, it's the math. Like it's, it's mathematically, your clients would pay you 40% more than you're charging. Yep. But you got to elevate. That's right. I mean, you got to elevate. You got to take flight. Is yep. you, you're not going to take flight, even like we're here in North Carolina. Like look at the Wright brothers. Okay. You're not going to take flight with some, without any risk that you could like, you know, <laughs> have somebody hurt your feelings and say, you know what? That's double last year. Like, forget you. I'm going to tell everybody else to not come here. Like it, that almost never happens, but like, yeah, you're going to take a risk of doing that. But what would you rather do? Like you'd rather take the risk of that happening and that person didn't really value your services the way that you feel like they should be valued. Or would you rather be broke every year, three quarters of the year, barely scraping by and racking up credit card debt? Yeah, no fun. I mean, it's, it's, it's either or at a certain point because it's math. It's simple math. And so that's why this elevate stage is so important. You know, there's basically two main ways that I see to get your, your tax career to the next level. Raise your prices by raising your value. You know, I want to make that clear. Don't just raise your price, but raise your value and find that highly profitable niche and yeah, just so kill let's, it. Let's talk about that second one now. So I think that's, that's a huge point. And it's something where we break down client groups these days into three types of clients. And in relation to how likely it is that for them to do their own taxes and not pay you a single cent. So you have an A, option A, they could do their own taxes if they wanted to pretty easily. Option B client, they could do their own taxes. It probably wouldn't be that easy. It take some time. They might get it wrong. And then there's option C, where it's like they would really not be wise to do their own taxes and they're probably not going to. So those are, that's kind of how we understand the marketplace in terms of clients. When you're looking at your pricing, which type of client are you talking to, right? Like, are you talking to a, a C client? They don't have other options that are as appealing as continuing to work with you that are going to be cheaper generally. Like they don't have other options. Like the people that they could work with that are as good as you, if you're doing what you need to do, are probably more expensive because people that have gone through this elevation stage of their business, they're not cheap. Like it's not going to happen. Like you may find every once in a while somebody like Kent, my dad, that's like a tax genius that has five decades of experience and is charging way under like other Market people. Rate, but yeah. generally, like that again, that's unicorn. Right. You're not going to find that. Right. Like that's why thousands of people go to him every year, right? Um, so for you, as you're looking at your pricing, understand your client base, and then also within your client base. What are the highly profitable niches? And remember that highly profitable with taxes it doesn't have to mean a high price because you have a balance when you're doing taxes between how long it takes you and how much like like how much future time you could spend if there's like issues and the person's calling you all the time etc um versus price so like you can't get caught up in in my opinion you can get caught up in this very easily <laughs> but you um you want to have niches within your business that are highly profitable and that can be achieved by a, a good, really good price point, but also can be perceived by, uh, achieved by a very defined type of job that can be repeated thousands of times. High volume. Yeah, high volume. Yeah. And also can be done by other people. 
Gotcha. So you could bring in a seasonal tax preparer to do, uh, you know, 300 or 200 short form type of tax returns, right? Right, right. But you couldn't bring in a seasonal tax preparer to do a good job on, you know, uh, C clients that have like businesses and rentals and all that. It would be more trouble than it's worth. Right. Gotcha. So, so you're looking at your different service offerings and you're saying you're doing the math on it. You know, how much volume can I do the, versus the price? Right. So you're kind of running those numbers saying, you know, I've got this many A clients, this many B clients, this many C clients. How many of these A clients can I do at this price point? How many B clients can I do at this price point? Right. And, and, and even more important than that would be. I think that's a great exercise to do, but to find within your client database, like who, if I had a thousand of these clients, like I'd still have a high quality of life and my like profits would be through the roof. And say, say for like for my dad, the, a lot of the business, uh, the genius of how he has run the business is that he really enjoys working with, you know, like, like working people. You know, people that, you know, other people, they would say like they're ordinary people or whatever, but he gives them that, you know, that, that white glove experience at a great price. And those type of people, they're not like a lot of times they're not going to hassle you like that much because they're, they're, you know, they're, they're like humble people, you know, they, they just like being treated well and like, they're not going to make your life too rough, generally speaking. And he enjoys that and he'll rather do, you know, 30 of those tax returns in a day then deal with a business owner that like like me that's going to like harass him all the time <laughs> call, call always try to get more and more and, and so it's just knowing that and being able to say this is the type of client that it takes me 10 minutes i make 100 bucks okay 100 bucks in 10 minutes pretty good so we, t- <laughs> we talked about last week we talked about you know knowing yourself and knowing your personality and and what kind of uh, personality you are versus your clients and who you fit with who you like working well with uh, i think that's something that you have to think about as well. You know, what kind of what kind of tax professional do you want to lean toward? Maybe you want to do both where you're doing high volume and the high, you know, value clients where you're spending a few days on one client but you're charging, you know, for that versus you're cranking through a ton of high volume at lower price points, right? Or outsourcing that. Uh, which one do you enjoy more? Which one, do you, you know, do you want to focus on more? Do you want to do both? Right. And which one's more profitable? All right. Which like, one's more profitable? Because you have to actually calculate out what is the time or co- time and cost of going into each type of client, right? So if you if you figure out that, wow, in any given tax season, I can only do X number of these types of clients before I run out of time and resources and it's too costly. You know, my margins are upside down, right? You might do the math and say, if I add up all my expenses, I would have to charge this for this to make sense at all. Or I'd have to do 300 or 500 or 1,000 of this type at this price point to make it profitable, right? And that's why I think concentrating on... Like when you're running a business and, you're, and you've gotten to that traction step, you know the highly profitable types of clients that you like working with. Because that's part of having a, a profitable business is you have a passion for what you're doing. You like helping those those people, those group of people. It's something that you don't mind doing for eight hours a day. You like doing it. You know, like that's like how my dad is. Like he would he loves going to the office. You know, l- relating to the people, checking in with them. You know, oh, your kids are growing up this way. You know, like it's just a great, beautiful part of his life. And a lot of that has to do with he knows the types of clients. That, that gravitate to him, that he can best help. And it's like a rinse and repeat. You know, I mean, it's, it's a repeatable business. And it's also something that other people can be trained to do without like eight years of schooling and all that kind of stuff. So when you're at this elevate, you're looking to elevate your business beyond the traction stage. Who are those profitable client, highly profitable clients for you? And then you can still segment your database and get into all that, the kind of finer points that you're talking about. But just by focusing on that and really starting to say, how can I get a hundred more people like that? Then you will be on the path towards elevating your business. Are you thinking about getting into the tax business, but not sure where to start? Maybe you're not even sure the tax business is the right fit for you. And you don't want to invest a lot of money or time quite yet. 
You just want to get a taste of tax knowledge and see if you like it. Or maybe you're an experienced tax pro and you see someone else in your world who needs an introduction to the tax business, but you don't have time to teach all the basics. If either of those situations sound familiar to you, you need to check out the Pronto Tax School Basic Income Tax Course today. It's fun, entertaining, and gets you a real IRS credential. Go to taxpronation.com basic to find out more. We talked about specialization. Obviously, you know, in the medical industry where I'm from, you know, the the specialists make more money, <laughs> right? So if you're in the if you're a tax pro and you specialize in X Y Z industry, right? Like you only do freelancers, or you only do you know an ethnic community group, or or you or you focus on that. Maybe, maybe you don't focus only on do that, but right, you focus right. on it. That's what you're known for. That's what you yep. want to do. That's what you're trying to attract. That you know that type of business. And you run your numbers, right? And you know that you not only enjoy that and that's your niche and that that's what your first 50 were kind of trending towards and everything points in that direction, but you know that you can be profitable at that and, and highly profitable, right? And if you're not profitable, you got to consider raising your prices, right? Because, because what are you, what favor are you doing to your clients? If you're not giving yourself a good quality life and a chance to not find, you know, like another opportunity is going to come your way if you're talented, right? So, what makes you want to stick with this and not just like take that and stop doing that entirely? And that's what clients like, that's where I think leadership comes in because you have to be a leader among your clients. You're the professional. That's and, right. th- and that's kind of a, it's a journey to get to that point. You know, don't just roll out of bed and like be, be like that. You know, it's, it's, there's a back and forth between the clients, but um, you're being a leader uh, of saying that, hey, if we raise prices because we're raising, raising value and everything that we do is for your best benefit. And that's just how it is here. That's just how we do things. And, and people that get to that point with their clients where they have that relationship, they start to take flight uh, in their business. Yeah, and to your point earlier, I mean, if your, your price is mapped to what's the closest alternative, right? Like, like if I'm a freelancer and I find a tax pro that just does freelancer tax returns, okay, so I can either pay your price or I can go search for days through my networks and trying to find on Google like another tax pro that does freelancers that I actually trust that does good work. And, and my friend referred me to you, right? So it's like, uh, okay, I'm probably going to pay the delta of what I think you're too expensive on just to get it done. <laughs> Especially if it's close to the deadline. Because remember, as you know, like we talked about, is taxes is not something that's tops on everybody's list that they want to deal with all the time. So if it's close to a deadline and it's, you know, the price is this, and they say, wow, that's a lot. And you just kind of sit there and just look at them. They mostly say, like, okay, well, when can you have it done by? Yeah. I mean, because what are you, what else are you gonna do? Like at the end of the day, like, what are you gonna do? And so when, you're, when your business has to have times, especially with a seasonal business, you have to have times where you crank your business, where you're like crushing. You know what I mean? And so that a lot of times comes down to, it's one of two things, which is what we're talking about in this episode. It's either you're charging a really good price or you're just in a highly profitable niche that you could just knock out. Like we, we had a particular niche in our Monrovia office, which was great, great people to work with. Um, that was horse groomers. It's like the most random niche <laughs> because Santa Anita Racetrack was right ah, down the street. Yeah, and so we had a lot of people that work with the horses, right? So you nice. say like, what you know, what do you do? Trabajo con con caballos. I work with the horses, right? And we, we were probably the only tax office in the world. It's like, oh, of course, you know, just horse worker. You know, that's what the the job title was, and that's a very defined type of tax return. They all were making around the same amount of uh, money. You know, they they had to decide like, are you claiming a dependent or, you know, and maybe they lived in, in Mexico or in a different country, you know, the issues that are there right? and you know how to address them very right. authoritatively right. and you just can knock it out. And it's like $140 tax return. It's a great deal for the client. Like they have a hundred percent backup year round if they ever have an issue and it's 140 bucks in what? Like it literally takes like 15 minutes. So 15 minutes for, you know, that's uh, 560 bucks an hour. It's so great. if you work 10 hours that day. You're doing really good. It starts to make sense. 
And then you're like, okay, I'm elevating. You're making more than <laughs> most people. Yeah. No. So, so, and, and just think about that niche, right? If I'm a horse worker and I'm going to dispute your raising of prices, where am I going to go? I mean, you're so specialized and you know me so well. And if I trust you, it's game over. I'm going to be doing business with you, right? And what's so cool too, Jeff, about which you, I'm sure you've seen in your sales career, um, especially when you're doing your own thing, is those clients where when they see you elevating and they ele- see you elevating your business and you raise prices on them, they're almost like, you know what, man? Good for you, man. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I always knew you were going to be somebody. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like that you're charging me this, but I, I understand why. I understand you're raising your game. And I trust you to keep getting better for me. And those because are the you're, kind my, of, you're my dog. Yeah, you know, and those you're are my the, man. Those are the kind of clients you want. You want cheerleaders that are going to help support you. And if they're not, then move on. You know. So do we want to talk about what is a highly profitable niche? Do you have some ideas on that you can kind of review with us on what, what are some niches that people can be thinking about? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's... Because we may be talking about niches and, and, and people find their own niches based on what clients are starting to attract to them. And so it may be, maybe your niche is people that even work at a particular company you know, in town, like a larger company that has 500 employees or whatever it might be. Like whatever your niche is, like you're going to find those things yourself by experience and by getting out there and, and helping, helping clients. Generally speaking though, there are certain niches that if you're hearing this and you're saying like, well, I don't know what my niche is or I'm not sure... Well, you're going to need that highly profitable niche to elevate your business. So that's A. So if you want to do that, then you need to be able to find that niche. And maybe it's something that you know it, you think it's one thing and then it turns into something else. So just allow yourself to have this journey as a professional and as an entrepreneur. You know, it's it's just part of the process that sometimes things change. You know, uh, but at the same time, there are certain niches that if you haven't found your niche yet and you're kind of thinking like what's a good niche these days? Well, I can tell you right now what's not a good niche is uh, W-2 wage earners who are under age 40. Like people that just have a W-2. Because they don't want to pay, they don't want to pay anything. They don't see any value in tax preparation. Like gener- I hate to generalize, but they basically are just like, why would I do that? I just plug this number into like this and it's like no problem. So that's not going to be a good niche for you as a tax professional. Right. So, so there's certain niches where y- you need to niche down more or be more specific, right? Like you can't just say, I am the tax pro for women, right? That's too general. <laughs> that too. Yeah. You could be too, too wide uh, or, or too broad, but you want to be in a niche that makes sense. And so for instance, with the, with the people under 40 that have a W-2, a great niche would be people that have a day job and are starting a side business. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a great niche. Right. Freelancers is a great niche. Sometimes they're kind of tough if you don't handle like your collecting of the bills properly or have your, you know, like you're trying to like, uh, I called him 10 times and he doesn't call me back. It's like, uh, he's a freelancer. He's probably <laughs> waiting for his next job. Right. So you got to be a little careful with your billing, but it's a great niche in terms of they need help. Um, another great niche would be uh, an ethnic community uh, working people because generally speaking, they don't want to do, do TurboTax or do online tax uh, do-it-yourself. They want to have a person and, a, and, and preferably a place that they go to that they know if they ever had an issue, you know, you're going to take care of me. That's very valuable in that type of community. Um, uh, an entrepreneur with a growing business, which there's, there's more and more of those. Um, I feel like we've really had a entrepreneurial resurgence in this country, which has been fantastic. Absolutely. The new tax law is going to make that, is just going to throw gasoline on that fire. So people are really starting to aggressively grow their businesses. Those are a lot of the clients, Jeff, that they are looking for a different solution than they have now. And they really want to be great clients. They're also a lot of times like wild horses that they got to be kind of like broken in. So you got to be up to the challenge of that. Um, that's why we, we've added that business tax verified training program with CPA Adam Shea to kind of give you a way to, to deal with and service those type of clients. But great niche, highly profitable um, clients that have a lot of needs. 
Um, rental real estate investors. So people that are investing in real estate is another great niche. So those are a few things that if you haven't found your niche already, I would kind of look at those and say, like, is that a place for me to start? And hopefully by going through those niches too, it gives you an idea of how to think through your own niche. Like maybe you're having something in your mind that you're thinking about, but, but like look at that thought process and see, um, you know, how closely can I identify with that person's needs? How big of a difference will it be if they choose to do their own taxes versus me helping them out? All those kind of questions, uh, and you keep kind of, kind of knocking on that door, you will find that highly profitable niche, and it'll be so key for you being able to elevate your business. Yeah, I'll tell you, doing some trading you know, over the years, I've definitely seen tax pros that do taxes specifically around uh, stock trading, stock trading and absolutely. option trading and all those kind of things. It's hard to find good tax pros that know what they're talking about, right? With wash sale rules and all the different things that go into that. Bitcoin trading, I mean, Bitcoin mining. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's a ton of niches that are even newer the, that you could specialize in and, and see if there's a market for. And just measure your niche by the things that we're talking about, no matter what your niche is, is remember fear and greed. So fear, if something were to go wrong, with this, what are the repercussions? Like wash sale rules, for instance, like you could not do that properly on your tax return. And both of those issues, fear and greed could be triggered because greed, because you could end up paying too much taxes. Fear, you could do it wrong and pay too little taxes, end up getting audited, end up getting fines, end up getting penalties, right? So you're on the you're, you're in the territory where if you say the right thing, you can do business with that person. Whereas somebody who's on W-2 and is 30 years old and feel, feels that they have a very, very simple situation, there's nothing there for me to be greedy or fearful about. Like you're going to plug numbers in the computer. It's going to be probably the same as I just did myself. And like, I'm not that fearful because I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just plugging my W-2, which the IRS already has. So looking for that difference between somebody doing it themselves and, and you taking care of it is really gives you, um, you know, a good way to look at, is this niche going to be highly profitable for me? Tax pros have seen it coming for years. The entrepreneurial wave is here, and that means more opportunity to do corporation, S-corp, and LLC business tax returns. With the new tax law, they're even more complex and in demand. Professionals who increase their skill set in this area can expect to become more profitable and successful. Pronto Tax School has the perfect online training course for you called Business Tax Verified with CPA Adam Shea. Find out more at taxpronation.com slash business. I'll also say another thing too, which is assess your client base and and see if you can anticipate what they're going to get into next. So you mentioned, you know, the entrepreneurial, you know, rev- revolution happening where uh, a lot of folks are going out on their own, right? And so if you have a client base that is doing that more and more, they're going to be looking for help in those areas. And if you are not increasing your skill set to be able to cover that as additional services, you're going to lose that business because they're going to find another tax pro that helps them with their business, right? And do all their business tax returns. And if that's not you, eventually that person will probably move over to that other tax pro to do everything. And that's exactly what I saw happening in our business where I was helping a lot of uh, new business owners, like I, I, since I've done so many startups myself, I always had a passion for like, you know, if somebody say it a bit, you know, I have an idea for this business and they are working a full time job, I'd be like, do it, you know, do it. That sounds great, and especially if it actually did sound great, sometimes I'd help them, you know, set up their DBA or you know, set up their accounting system, like whatever it was, just get them started. And then I see like, okay, they start getting to like a hundred thousand of revenue. They're actually building up, and they really like working with us. They like working with me. But since I wasn't that comfortable, I didn't have an accounting background in doing like corporations, as corporations and LLCs. Those clients, we kept losing them mm-hmm. because it was nothing personal. It's just that my business has grown to this point where I have a corporation now. I need like a lot of other things. And so that was actually the entire impetus for doing that business uh, tax verified training program with CPA Adam Shea is say, hey, this is being experienced by a lot of our Pronto Tax School members is we're helping these newer business owners get up to that $100,000 level. 
but then we're not really reaping the rewards of all our work. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean that the client needs to do something differently, right? It doesn't mean that we need to get our feelings hurt. Right. It means that we need to step up our game. That's right. Right. We need to get more training to be able to do that and feel confident doing that. Right. So that's, that's sometimes what people, uh, if you get stuck on this step, uh, you have traction, but you don't yet have elevation, which we've all been there. Like, I don't mean to say that I haven't been there. Is that what are we going to do differently to get that? Yeah. Not to feel bitter because people don't see our value and get mad when you raise prices or whatever. If people are getting mad at you raise prices, the thing that we need to do as professionals is figure out how to raise prices in the right way and talk to people in the right way or they're happy to pay it. And the thing to do is not for us to get upset and say, oh, they're such a jerk or whatever. Like, no, we have to take responsibility for our own success. And anybody that hits this elevation step, you know, as you know from your own career, is you're going to own what's going on with you. And, uh, and, and you're going to put it out there for your clients, uh, provide that incredible value and get, you know, get great value for yourself uh, in return. And that's a fair deal. So what's one thing that we could share that would help somebody that has been stuck for years at this, at this step? I think the number one thing I'm so glad you brought up um, is being in a community and, and whether that means a mentor, a business coach, uh, being part of our community, being involved with other people, Jeff, that want to see you elevate your business. Because you can't underestimate, like, I remember when I was first trying to do different business ventures or with my writing career or things like that, I was, it's upsetting sometimes when you notice that people don't really want you to actually reach your full potential Mm. because they feel like they're not reaching their full potential. And so sometimes it's like a crabs in the barrel type of thing where everybody's just trying to keep everybody else down. And if you're trying to do something different or actually be yourself or whatever else, like people don't want you to do that. And so you have a choice to either say like, that hurts my feelings. Like I actually, you know, like they, they don't really want me to be successful. Here I am. I care about these 50 clients so much. I've gone, I've always gone the extra mile for them. And they're hassling me about being able to pay my bills, you know, and not, and so like, wow, that's really like messed up. But at the same time, like once you go beyond that yourself, those people, they come along. I mean, they come along there and it's, and we can't hold it against people that are in that situation because a lot of times that's just how they feel, you know, about their situation. So when you're involved with a community that wants to help you do that, you are able to have not just that negative feedback, but have positive feedback and say, you know what? It was a rough day at the office. Like we all will have those rough days where maybe you did get rejected by like five people when you try to raise <laughs> prices, you know? <laughs> it does happen. Like you're like, you just had a bad day, you know? It, it just happens. So do you have a community that you can reach out to? Do you have somebody that is on your side? That's like, no, you know, you may have, um, you know, just like the Wright brothers, you know, they, they didn't take flight on every single time, right? Sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes you end up like, crashing in the field and you got to go back to the drawing board or whatever it is. But when you have, um, you know, like they were brothers, they had each other to help each other out. So who is that person or that, or that community that has the positive, uh, and that's what we want to be for people, you know, uh, that, that's what we want to be a part of that dynamic of uh, not being out on that island by yourself. And especially when you're starting to elevate and you need those other teammates that want to see you take flight. So the decision to assess your support structure, like who are you surrounding yourself with? Are they, are they holding you back? Are they, are, are they preventing you from elevating? Or are they supporting you to, to grow and push your boundaries? And, and really, you are the sum of the five people that you surround yourself with, right? So, so who are those influential people that you're putting yourself around? And are they actually helping you? So that's key. And also being, you know, being that to other people. You know, if you see other people, like that, that's something that I always love to do, like with clients is if I see, hey, they got a raise or they made a big step in their career or had a new baby or, you know, it's just like, you got to be positive to celebrate other people. Like you're doing it, man. Like even if clients, like um, some of those clients that I discussed that they're growing their business and like at that time I wasn't equipped to really help them with a million dollar business. I would still celebrate and say, you know what, man, you're doing your thing. Like, here's, here's a CPA that is going to be a better fit for you. 
Like, we'll always be friends. It's all good. I'm happy we helped you get to this point. So we have to be that, that positive person um, in other people's lives. And that's what builds that, you know, that virtuous circle where we all can, uh, you know, just have fun and, and be ourselves and try to reach our full potential. That's great, man. Anything else you want to say on this step? That's about it. I mean, I, I don't want to get too deep into the to, to the people that want to want to hold you down um, because there are those type of people that happens in life. And I just think this elevation stage is is so important because sometimes it's the people that you think are going to be most on your side that don't want you to break that barrier. Family, you know, yeah, yeah, it could be family <laughs> because they're scared for you, you know, or it just you know, again, it's think about the Wright brothers taking flights, like. Not everybody, maybe their mom didn't want them to do that. As they get up there, who knows what's going to happen then, right? (laughs) Just stay on the ground, you know, don't do this. But if you are serious about elevating your business and your career, there's certain things that you need to do. And so hopefully this episode has given you the two main things that I see from my experience, which is being able to raise prices by raising your value and finding and, and mining one highly profitable niche. If you do those two things consistently and persistently, you have a chance to really elevate your business and be a great success. That's awesome. Well, this has been good. Uh, Hopefully this was helpful to you. I have been Jeff Dolan. And I've been Andy Fry. Thank you so much for listening. All of the show notes for this episode can be found at taxpronation.com slash four. We have actually created an infographic of the Pronto Pass so you can see all of the steps in one place go ahead and download that on the same page. We hope this episode made your life a little bit easier and more profitable. Join us next week as we continue down the Pronto path to talk about step five, acceleration. Earn a profit that makes a meaningful, positive impact for your personal freedom and lifestyle. Take care.